Don't I like finishing up. fights. I mean, yeah. there's no doubt about it. We don't get paid overtime for this job. Um, so why are you going to make it last longer than you need to? And I've got 100% finish rate. I want to keep that intact. Okay, second UFC fight coming up this Saturday and you have another tough opponent in Diego Sanchez. Very experienced, as was Neil Magny before. What were your thoughts when you first got the call and offered him as an opponent? It wasn't the opponent I was expecting. I, was, I wasn't sure where in, say, the UFC chain I would fit. Um, after losing to Magny and being fairly new to the promotion, I wasn't sure if I'd fit in, say, in the mid-tier, say, bottom tier. Um, it's kind of hard to gauge because there's so many talented welterweights in the division. So everyone's asking me who I wanted next, who I thought I'd get next, and I genuinely had no idea. There was too many possibilities. So when I did get offered Diego Sanchez, um, it was a massive shock. I called up the coach. I was like, this is who they've offered. We got really excited. Straight away, it's like, a, yeah, we're going to do that. There's no hesitation. Same as the Magni fight. Um, we're fighters foremost, so getting the opportunity to fight someone like Diego Sanchez, whether it's your second UFC fight, your 12th UFC fight, any UFC fight, it's a great fight to have, um, and it's going to be very entertaining for the fans. Oh, absolutely. We expect that. Do you take, take it as a compliment as well that they're offering you these names and they see you as that calibre of fighter? Yeah, I think I've put in my stint as an ex martial artist over the years, and being in UFC, getting these opponents is my reward. Um, I've relished the opportunity to fight these guys. I've watched Diego Sanchez for years, same as most people growing up, just following the sport. He's done a lot for it. Future UFC Hall of Famer in the making. And yeah, fighting people with that experience and that caliber is just great to be thrown in the mix with. And when he was doing tough back in, or tough, what was it, tough five? Tough or tough, was it tough one yeah, he was in? Yeah. Were you even training martial arts at that time? I've been in martial arts since I was 11, so um, I started with Taekwondo and I've been in MMA since I was about 16, 17, so that would have been around the time when I was starting to transition into wanting to do the full contact side of martial arts, um, to then going into doing mixed martial arts at Lions Den where I am now and have been since. So it's kind of around the same time and that was when obviously UFC started becoming more mainstream MMA as a whole, um, thanks to all the fights that they put on on that Ultimate Fight series. So I guess from that it's kind of in my road towards this. And do you feel like you're going to get the best Diego Sanchez? Obviously he's coming off a few losses now, he's a little later in his career, but do you feel you'll be getting the Diego Sanchez that you, you, know, you maybe would have wanted to fight at some point? I'm hoping I get the most motivated Diego Sanchez that you can have. From what I've seen, he's very motivated. He's had close to a year out after the last loss. He's really really reevaluated what he's doing. Um, he seems very motivated, very aggressive, which is the type of Diego Sanchez you want to be fighting, you want to watch fight. So, as long as I get that Diego Sanchez, one that isn't what people are thinking, 36, 37, past it, had two knockouts, he shouldn't be fighting, should be retiring, you can't count a guy like this out. He's very experienced, he's done a lot for the sport, and to think otherwise of him just really isn't fair to him. Um, so, I'm going in there mentally prepared for the best Diego Sanchez, and I really hope I get that. I want someone to go in there that wants to take my head off. Um, <laughs> So I can put on the entertainer fight for everyone. I love that you say that. I want, I want someone to take my head off. I want them to want to take my head off. But we know with him, he always brings the crazy. He always brings that. But you haven't been past the second second round, just? No, I'm yet to go to a third round. I've come close. So um, you're a, few a guy times. that's going to put on that kind of Yeah, I, I like well. finishing fights. I mean, yeah. there's no doubt about it. We don't get paid overtime for this job. Um, so why are you going to make it last longer than you need to? And I've got 100% finish rate. I want to keep that intact. And I find that most people want to watch fights to get finished. You don't want to be watching loads of fights that go to decision and the great thing about being early on the card, you can be one of the fights that upsets that chain if there have been a few de decisions, if there are going to be decisions. I just want to put in a performance for everyone. Yeah, and obviously your UFC debut in Liverpool in May, you had how many, two weeks notice, you had to cut 46 pounds of weight, which is what, about 20 kilograms. We just said it's like a leg, you want to remove <laughs> a leg to make that kind of weight. I mean, completely different this time. You've had six weeks. You, you yeah, told me just before we started talking. About six weeks compared to the 12. So, so how different do you feel? I feel amazing. I mean, I feel very human. My weight cut has been amazing. Um, without even intending to, when I had the call cool up from changing the structure of my training, how I was doing things, my weight was already down. Instead of being 98 kilos getting the call, cool, I was 90 kilos. Um, and I hadn't even started doing any dieting or trying to keep my weight down. Um, it was all just for extra training. So I've been enjoying my weight cut this time. Um, like I said, I feel very human, I'm able to train effectively, I feel in fantastic shape and I'm pretty much close to my weight now and I've still got a few days left to go. So Must be a nice feeling. But look, <laughs> and I don't want to talk to you about it right now too much because it's not fair, but you love pizza by the looks of it. I do love it. pizza. There's been, you do this dinosaur pizza that you cook yourself <laughs> that I saw on your Instagram, you've been 
tweeting about having to walk past pastry and pizza yeah, places on the way to the gym. Sounds like you torture yourself a little bit. <laughs> I do, yeah, but when I first started out fighting, I was working at Tesco's. Um, okay. So every day I'd be going past all the sweets and chocolate, smell the bakery. <laughs> so I got thrown in the deep end then and walking to work every day is I go past every possible food place and I just love food. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> so, yeah. And does that intensify when you know you can't have it during a fight camp? It can do. I mean, I'm quite lenient anyway. I know what works for me for my body. So literally last week I was eating pizzas and I'm cutting weight. Because um, you've had time to do yeah, it Yeah, because I've had time. I've been ahead of schedule. I mean, Saturday, my last meal I had before we left to um, start travelling here, I went to the pub and got burger and chips. So, I mean, some people will see it and be like, well, why isn't he eating healthy stuff like chicken and pasta? But you might as well enjoy yourself. And as long as it's not having any detriment to your weight cut or your training, um, which is what I find it doesn't. Like, you know it's it works. Yeah, it works yeah. for me. So I don't have nutritionist. I don't count calories or macros. I just eat what I want. I know what I can eat. Um, limit it and it's worked for me for going on 22, 23 pro fights now. Yeah, absolutely. And look, you, you fought Neil Magny who in a co-main event, I mean, that's a, a huge fight for you. What, despite it not going the way you would have liked, you didn't get the win, what did you learn from that? What did you take away from having that, that level of fighter? I learned never to do a weight cut like that again. But <laughs> you promised not to do it in the past. Yeah, that is, it's the <laughs> second time I've done it, but genuinely like, um, it was horrendous and I don't want to do it again. But the way, every reason I did it this time was I had the UFC offered to me and you're not going to say no. And if I had to know and then seen someone else say that, I would have been so annoyed and frustrated and I wouldn't be here where I am now. But you're still working, am I, am I right in saying, a nine to five job and training in your lunch break? I mean, yes. how, how does that work? So I still work a full-time job. Yeah. Um, Doing what? I'm financial services administrator, so mainly dealing with pensions. Um, so it's a complete different scale on the opposite end of what this is. Um, but yeah, I do nine to five. I have a very supportive work environment. Um, they've let me get the time off for this on quite short notice, and they've been very supportive. But yeah, my training, I train before work, during my lunch break, after work. So I'm getting like three sessions in minimum a day. Um, if I can get a fourth in, even during the week, I'll do so. Weekends is the same. Um, I'm just trying to structure everything around running essentially two full-time jobs. Uh, do you this think at some point you'd want to just focus on fighting or do you almost like that you have something different to go and do in between? You can only train so many hours in a day. Yeah. So having um, some social interaction and some mental stimulation outside of that does help. Working to the extent of full-time on two jobs might be quite difficult. So maybe further down the line, I might look to step back. Um, a bit last conversation for me to have my employer and I mean, like they've been supportive and I'm quite loyal with things. So I don't want to just be like, yeah, I've got here now, bye. Yeah. And leave them in the lurch. Um, Cause I get on with them, I enjoy working there and it does work for me for the time being. It's tiring and demanding, but I'm able to run two things. It's flexible and for the times when I'm not fighting, well, if, I'm, if I've got a fight coming up and I don't necessarily want to train as much, want to have a bit of time off, I might as well be working. And I've still got that stable income coming in where I can facilitate my life on that and then any additional money I get, well, that's my financial support for years to come. Sounds like a sensible plan. Yeah. You're very settled at the Lions Den, yeah. your, your training camp, your team. Have you got the members of the team out here with you? Have people I've got my coach out here with me, mm -hmm. um, and then I've got my parents coming over, and my dad's going to be in my corner with Dave and my coach, so I'm going to have them two in my corner this time. Um, no one else has come over, just other commitments. Right? We have a very small team, um, and by me and Dave being over here, we don't necessarily have anyone to be running the classes at the gym. We've got other fights coming up on Cage Warriors, um, like end of the month, start of next month. So the other guys in the team are busy running the classes and just keeping their training ticking over. So we're quite a self-sufficient team. We function really well, um, but the downside to being small is we can't take too many people away from that else things won't work. Yeah, you've got to split and, split yeah. and divide, but so you've, got, you've got your coach with yeah, you. Yeah, I've got my one corner man, which yeah. is essentially what I need. Some people have had some negative things to say about that. But right. In what sense? Um, just people don't seem to think that one corner man's effective. Right. Um, they seem to think that you need these big teams where you've got a set coach for boxing, mm -hmm. wrestling, jiu-jitsu, everything. But we're in mixed martial arts and everyone has their own set way of doing things. And in the corner, you get one person whose voice you're gonna hear. Well, for me, that's Dave. Yeah. I've been with him 12 years. He knows how I work. He knows me better than most people, if not the best out of anyone. Yeah. We spend pretty much every day together and I spend more time with him than anyone else. <laughs> Um, so there's no one else I'd want in my he's corner. The man. Yeah, he's yeah. he's my second dad. I trust in my life, oh. so I could get other people in who I haven't got that long standing relationship with that would just sit on the sidelines and just not really say anything. Yeah. Um, they might have an input in training, which would be great. But what I've done and what I've had for the last twelve years has worked and got me to this point. So if it's any break, you don't really need to fix it. Yeah. Um, and that's the way I work and the way we run it.
Uh, it makes sense. Look, the main event's your, your division as well, welterweight world title, Darren Till, Tyron Woodley. Have you got some thoughts on that? Well, you, you know, obviously be something you'll be interested in yourself once you're wrapped up, but um, thoughts on who might take that one or how it might go down? It's a hard one to call, so yeah. I think both of them are effective in their own game. So obviously I think Till, very long, very strong, very heavy and big welterweight. So if he can get his weight cut sorted and get the rehydration sorted, that, he's going to have that big size advantage. I mean, you can see from the post, he towers over Woodley. Um, yeah. So, but Woodley is, again, his experience, he's a great wrestler and he does have that knockout power and the striking, you just haven't really seen it as much, but he's been very inactive and yeah. Till on the other hand has been active. So, yeah. I mean, it's a tough one to call. I mean, I'd like to see Till take it, mm -hmm. um, whether he will or not though, we'll just have to wait and see. Is it nice knowing there's, you know, there's, you're in America and there's two other Brits on the card, you know, yeah. we, we asked the same question to, to Darren Stewart earlier and um, yeah, it's you know, nice sense I mean, of, sort of the UK taking over a little bit. We get, yeah, just coming over like, it's not being the only one you've got other people to talk to. Yeah. Um, we have a good work relationship with Darren and Stuart at the MMA yeah. clinic from like the Cage Warriors days and just yeah. UFC Liverpool, like just in general. So having someone you could be familiar with and friendly with, it does help. Yeah. Um, it means you can tie up some training together. Um, and then when you're going away to things like your medicals that like we did today, you've just mm. got the extra people just there for a bit yeah. of chat. So a bit of camaraderie. And yeah, it's yeah. just all good to keep it social. Cause I mean, most of the time we're just in this hotel, stuck in a room going between training in the room, training in the room, just yeah. downtime and recovery. So just having the availability to go around and just mix it up a bit does help. Well, obviously you're going to need to paint your toenails again if you've not done so this already. already. Done. Has this been done for this fight? Yep. Colours? Um, red and black, so same as last time. It's Can always we see? Red. How's your flexibility getting <laughs> put up on camera? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so <Very> <laughs> it will always be red and black tiger stripes. Um, tiger stripes are just something that got started getting done, but the red and black are team colours. Is and that just for a fight night or is or whatever fight event it is, or is it for training as well? Um, I'll put it on for fight, so, okay. but what I'll do is between fights is I'll either, if I can't be bothered, I'll let it grow out and just <laughs> eventually take it off, or like last time I took it off quite soon because <laughs> it was a bit weird. Yeah. I just, I go through phases and I decide, <laughs> but yeah, it, it does depend, but normally it will always be on for every fight. I've never not done it, so nice it's just Looks traditions. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, have a great fight week, um, weight cut, and we look forward to seeing you there on Saturday night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes.